specifically is a press conference or a media briefing on, um, on drones. So we have about 30 minutes. Uh, we have some excellent speakers. Uh, the session is filmed and webcast live, and we're tweeting using the hashtag uh, AF19. That's hashtag uh, AF19. Um, so I'm delighted to welcome uh, Edward Anderson, who's a senior resilience specialist with the World Bank. Paula Ingabira, who's um, uh, ICT minister um, uh, for Rwanda. Um, and my colleague, uh, Timothy Reuter, um, who, uh, uh, who's uh, flown in from, uh, from San Francisco. He's with our Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution and um, does some incredible work around, around drones. Um, I'm going to pass on to uh, my colleague Edward here, who's, um, who's going to set the scene for, this, for the launch of this, um, this new platform, which is, um, which is intended to help lives across the continent um, through drone technology. Thank you, Max. Um, indeed, uh, let me commend the World Economic Forum and Government of Rwanda for convening us here and address why is the World Bank supporting technology and drone agenda in Africa. As we see Africa rising, and particularly the growth in economies and populations, we also see a, a transition to a more youthful demographic and a more urban population. So the, the challenge of equitable growth and equality of opportunity is really important, and ensuring the, uh, there isn't a divide between urban and rural. So how do we address that, as well as skills and opportunities for, for young people entering the labor force? So fourth industrial revolution is really exciting because it's giving birth to these new industries. And we've seen the leapfrogging that happened with the, the mobile phone adoption. That wasn't just a lower cost and lower complexity solution for rural communications, but also innovation around that. Mobile finance, pay as you go. So when we think about drones and autonomous systems, it's a similar leapfrogging opportunity. And I think it can have a significant impact in, in two macro challenges in Africa that's facing. One is, is mobility, where a third of the rural population live within 15 minutes of an all-weather road, whereas in East Asia, it's 90% of the population. So that's really a big challenge for rural facilities and hard-to-reach communities in terms of cost, time, resilience. And the other one is, is a mapping and data. 90% of Europe is surveyed to local scales regularly. And if Africa is really going to develop its land, its tenure systems, its agriculture, we also need to invest heavily in new digital mapping solutions. So with this in mind, the World Bank has been moving away from piloting technologies and really looking how do we work on the whole enabling environment and how do we support governments that have a vision for the future they want to, to realize that in a safe, equitable, and cost-effective way. So this is really a holistic approach between regulators, industry, innovators, and logistical champions. We've also recognized that technology is unpredictable. The tremendous change in the last five years, I think, will be dwarfed by the next five years. So rather than picking winners, we want to have a, a competition-based format introduced as well. And we trialed this in the Lake Victoria Basin last year, known as the Lake Victoria Challenge, bringing innovation teams from around the world to focus on locally defined problems, whether it's delivery to a hard-to-reach community or a pickup of a sample or mapping a remote area. So now we're partnering with the government of Rwanda and many other institutions to develop the next iteration, which will be in Rwanda in February 2020, both in Kigali and in Lake Kivu, including flying competitions, but more broadly engagement with regulators, lessons learned from pioneering governments. Rwanda in particular has been pioneering in health delivery, but across the continent with a focus on high social and economic impact applications for rural areas. So it'll be known as the African Drone Forum, and we are looking forward to collaboration with your government minister and with the World Economic Forum. Thank you. Thank you. Minister. Thank you. Um, for the government of Rwanda, the, our interest and excitement uh, around hosting the Africa Drone Forum is twofold. Uh, the very first one is um, around uh, our intention and deliberate focus on how do we leverage emerging technologies uh, in responding to our social economic development challenges. And um, very specifically for this forum, because what we're looking at is uh, the use of uh, unmanned vehicles, something that the government of Rwanda has been very active in terms of 
creating performance-based regulations that allow us to strike the balance between the safety and security concerns around uh, drones and, and flying drones, but at the same time being able to balance that with how do we promote innovation. And, and finding that right balance really um, was, was driven by that performance regulation that allows us to you know, set the security and safety standards that we want to see. And then the drone operators are able to, you know, respond with a proposal on how they are going to meet those as they, um, as, as they, 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 they design the different uh, mission critical uh, activities that they are responding to. And so that's our focus. And, and as a country that is really focused to be a proof of concept hub, where we are looking to how do we test and try uh, some of these emerging technologies in very unique ways and unique models that can be scaled to the rest of the continent. And being able to bring in an industry of, uh, of drone operators that are going to be looking at uh, how we can use drones in agriculture, in healthcare, uh, construction, mining, different aspects uh, and different industries. And so being that proof of concept hub and being able to convene all these minds and industry together to sort of say, we are open to doing business with you. We are opening to being a test bed, but with the intention that you're creating a Pan-African business, you're creating a global business that is going to scale beyond Rwanda. The second aspect is, again, more tied to our MICE uh, hub uh, you know, vision, uh, becoming you know, the hub for meetings, conferences, and exhibitions, and really the kind of facilitation and support structures that have been designed around that. And, um, being the place that has you know, the convention facilities to be able to host this kind of uh, forum. But also, more importantly, as we bring in different people into the continent, uh, you know, affording them visas on arrival, making it easy for people that want to attend. And so uh, you know, being able to explore um, and, and further develop our MICE hub and intentions through uh, this kind of forum. And so that's why it's very exciting for us as the government of Rwanda to host this. But most importantly, to even share our story as, as Rwanda, uh, the learnings from you know, developing these regulations, from testing uh, you know, some of these drone use, use, uh, use case applications. But beyond that, even being able to improve, because the essence around drone regulations and policymakers is that we need to create an agile regulation. So how do you create regulations that are going to be constantly responding to the changing landscape that we have? And so bringing together all the policymakers and industry players is going to be great input in how we create this um, you know, agile type of regulations that are going to help us to further respond uh, to our social economic challenges, leveraging uh, drone technologies. Thank you. And um, Timothy, I mean, Rwanda's very much been a sort of, um, kind of a hub of experimentation uh, in this um, uh, in, this, in this whole field. Could you give some, some context there, please? Sure. So, and also, uh, I think the forums, yeah, the forums work with, uh, uh, with Rwanda. On that, that's design. right. We, we've been lucky to have a uh, now two-year partnership uh, supporting the government of Rwanda as they develop path-breaking regulations that are really serving as an example to the rest of the world of the potential for performance-based approaches that the, the minister just highlighted. And the, the forum really sees drones as an area of technology where Africa is leading the world in the actual implementation of socially beneficial use cases. And we hope to you know, highlight areas that the rest of the world can learn from. Uh, we're very pleased to be uh, partnering with the bank and the government of Rwanda around the African Drone Forum, where our role will be to convene regulators from across the continent for a discussion of how can they create an enabling ecosystem in their own jurisdictions to actually try out some of the applications that they're going to be seeing in the real world at the forum. And our aspiration is that this will be the beginning of starting to create some pan-African and perhaps regional approaches to the governance of this technology that will fully unleash its potential to save lives and improve livelihoods across the continent and that can serve as an example uh, to other countries and an inspiration to companies around the world for what is possible. And so we're excited to see uh, teams from around the world come to Rwanda 
and understand uh, what the situation is in Africa and perhaps how they can participate in supporting this ecosystem. And I'd also like to add that uh, we're continuing to look for partners for the African Drone Forum. Uh, this includes teams that would like to uh, demo their technologies here and get exposure to uh, regulators and a different context, um, as well as other kinds of uh, you know, corporations, uh, civil society organizations that may be interested in sponsoring or partnering on other elements of the African uh, Drone Forum's activities. Thank you. Uh, just, uh, I think just before we sort of um, go to further remarks or, or, or Q&A, um, you sort of mentioned that um, this has been a partnership already for the past two years, and, and you've talked about where, it's, yeah, where, you, where, you, where you see things, things going now. And you mentioned applications. Are there sort of actual applications, I guess this is a question really to, to all of you, that, that you've seen in the past two years? To get, so I guess um, give people uh, examples of, uh, yeah, tangible examples where you've sort of seen, um, uh, where you've seen things happen. I think for us, uh, it started with the story of uh, bringing in Zipline uh, mm. to test uh, transporting blood products to rural areas that were not exactly accessible, but also where if we had to make, uh, you know, lower the cost of, uh, of transporting blood to rural areas and lower the wastage uh, of blood that happens, it would, make, it would mean making a substantial investment from the government of Rwanda to have all these cold rooms in these different healthcare centers. And that was such a huge investment to make. And so being able to um, you know, leverage the opportunities that these emerging technologies like drones would give us to lower the cost of actually providing healthcare and quality healthcare was very important. But beyond that, we've then started to see an industry of startups mushrooming in the industry where you have, for example, we have a local startup that was born out of the efforts of creating a drone ecosystem in Rwanda. And what they're doing today is using drones uh, to, to, to spray uh, uh, during, in the marshlands, and that really controls um, you know, the spread of mosquitoes. And, and so you, you start to see all these different startups that are doing things that they're very passionate about, leveraging drone technologies. And so for us, it's been an exciting journey that started with just attracting one proof of concept type of company. And then suddenly you see uh, you know, startups that are mushrooming and benefiting from these regulations that have been put in place uh, to create an industry. Sure, I mean, I think Rwanda has certainly been a pioneer and um, it's made drones a reality for many countries. They might have thought this was a far off sort of future and then they realized this is a commercial contract and here and present with the um, blood delivery program. But since then we've seen that the drones have a niche in many different contexts, uh, fragile states, least developed countries, as well as more advanced economies. And, and there's really a lot of innovation to be seen in Africa. In, in Zanzibar, they managed to replace their national base map using very small, low-cost, uh, hand-launched drones with 2,500 flights. They were not designed for that purpose at all, but through that experience, you developed a lot of skills, a lot of pilot experience, a lot of startups now in agriculture and risk assessment. But we've seen also that drones are quite well-suited for things like live insect distribution. You know, this is a new application completely in disease control, malaria control, set sea fly control, which they're trialing in Ethiopia. So the distribution of, of live sterile insects, um, the distribution or collection of, of cold chain products, samples that need to be at a particular temperature for the delivery of vaccines, and not only for, for school children, but for, for livestock, so agricultural products. Um, I think that there are many frontier use cases that, that Africa will pioneer, and that's really what we're hoping to discover through this African Drone Forum. Okay. Thank you. And Timothy, anyone? Yeah, and we, we've also been excited to see how humanitarian organizations have been using drones across Africa in order to support community resilience after disasters. Um, in particular, the World Food Program mapped large areas of Mozambique uh, in response to recent uh, disasters there. And UNICEF has opened uh, two drone corridors uh, on the continent, first in Malawi, and they recently announced moving to Sierra Leone. So we're seeing a lot of experimentation in one country that's being brought across to, to other countries as well. 
um, and part of the, the uh, our goals for the Africa Drone Forum is to bring all of the people who are doing those things together so they can share those experiences and talk with governments about how they can enable those activities in their own jurisdictions. And, and um, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, the example of, of, um, of blood transfusion deliveries in, in Rwanda, I mean, that was a very, very quick, uh, quick thing that happened, which, which, you wouldn't, um, uh, um, which you wouldn't see in, on a lot of other continents, which have, um, have got very sort of high levels of regulation. Is it, uh, am I correct in that, uh, in that regard? I, I don't want to support it. I mean, Rwanda is still the only example in the world of national scale drone delivery. Um, and now that experience is moving on to Ghana. And I know uh, there's a lot of other countries on the continent that are considering as well. And we've actually seen uh, governments from Western countries in North America and Europe traveling to Rwanda to try and understand how that was enabled in the Rwandan context. And I think a lot of that was pretty much enabled by the willingness to, um, to test some of these uh, you know, applications, but also the willingness to work with the different players um, to sort of like put in place, okay, what are our concerns? What safety concerns do we have? Uh, can we, you know, put them on the table and then try and get, you know, the different operators to then say, this is how we are going to respond to your concerns while, you know, uh, delivering on our mission. And so, which is why I brought in the element of the performance-based regulation. I think it was a good step to helping us move very fast into piloting and then eventually scaling this to the rest of the country. Be, in, in, in really. It's more like a sandbox environment where you almost understand what are the risks and how do we work around these risks without um, you know, negating the potential benefit of actually using these technologies to, uh, to respond to an after challenge that we have. Thank you. Um, do we have any, we have, uh, we have some microphones. Do we, um, do we have any questions? That's a uh, question from, from this gentleman here. Could you say, there's a microphone coming. Could you say um, your name? and the organization you work sure. for. Sure. Thank you. My name is Ralf Krüger. I'm working for DPA, German Press Agency. Um, I've got two questions. I would like to know, um, as you were talking about pioneering, how many other countries in Africa have already knocked at the door in order to follow the example? Secondly, um, what is the status of uh, Rwanda right now? I mean, uh, is it just using drones or are you already a step further in uh, developing drones and uh, maybe exporting them to other African countries? Thanks. Uh, your, your question is to Minister, Minister, Minister Ingeberg. Okay. So, um, for the first question, how many other countries do you think even with the example of Zipline that just, has just was just mentioned a while ago, uh, they've been able to scale beyond Rwanda and now they're in Ghana. But we're also seeing other countries, Tanzania wants a similar approach. We're seeing other countries that want to, um, you know, want a similar model for maybe even similar challenges, but for some of them it could be in healthcare, but different uh, use cases. And, and, and um, Zipline has been getting, you know, a number of, uh, you know, uh, com countries that are saying, can you do what you done in Rwanda for us. Uh, when it comes to uh, the second question, which is around, are we still using drones or looking at developing drones? I think it, it's a mix. So we started off with testing the use of drones in delivering blood or other use case applications that were relevant. And so that is where our biggest focus has been on how do we, um, you know, how do we embrace these emerging technologies and use them for um, uh, to respond to our challenges. The second bit around developing drones, we have what we call uh, a fab lab within Kigali, uh, where we have many, of, you know, a center of excellence that, that works very closely with them. And what they're doing is more on the hardware bit, and they're working with these different entrepreneurs that are passionate to build things, and they're testing and piloting. They haven't yet reached the point where they can put something on the market, but at least they're still 
in the design aspects of how do you even build uh, such a product before you think of prototyping it and then eventually building an actual product that you can put to the market. And so it's a journey. It's, it started with really um, you know, creating the market and looking at the potential use case and then thinking about how do we now build drones and can we think. And everything that we do as Rwanda, whether we are uh, looking at it from a service perspective of using the services, we're always thinking about export as a means to scaling uh, because it's important for growth uh, of these companies uh, as opposed to just limiting themselves to the Rwandan market but thinking about the region and because they're tackling uh, global challenges and not, it's not challenges that are only specific to Rwanda it helps them to embed in their business model the ability to scale and export uh, from outside from within from outside uh, Rwanda I'd just like to add one small uh, addendum to that uh, which is what we see is many uh, small entrepreneurs buying low-cost hardware and then starting up businesses where they sell services. And in fact, much more of the value can be captured that way, uh, especially for aerial imagery. Uh, and we're seeing those uh, people also sometimes going across borders to take the experience of creating maps in their own country and bringing that to uh, other countries on the continent. Yeah, yeah please. Add a further point, if I may. It, it's also not only the way I see it, the, the drone hardware as the technology of interest, but more broadly, digital innovations and robotic innovations. So the innovation in artificial intelligence for both uh, autonomous navigation but image processing is going hand in hand with the capabilities of the flying vehicle. Yeah. And then on the ground, the minister mentioned the fab lab, you know, digital fabrication in terms of assembly of spare parts that the drone could carry and deliver or parts that could help repair and assemble the drone. And many um, international drone companies are designing their drones to be 3D printable so that they could actually be printed and assembled locally okay. um, and then sort of used on demand. And you have many, many different models. So one of the features of the African Drone Forum is not only a flying competition for drone teams, but a business model competition for Af African entrepreneurs who have ideas of a problem they can solve with these technologies and what they can bring to bear. Thank you. We have um, about a minute left. Um, are there any, any questions? When Sorry, your forum? question? Oh, when is the forum? February 2020 in Kigali and Lake Kivu. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, a question over here. Can we, can we get the microphone over? Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Asha Speckman. Um, I'm with the Business Times in South Africa. Minister, I forgive me if you have you may have covered this, but I actually just wanted to get a sense of I mean generally in Africa issue is always around cost of delivery, service delivery, and I wanted to get an understanding if you know of of how perhaps um, through your pilot study you've been able to assess kind of um, just in terms of from a cost perspective, you know, what, what the implications are or kind of how, uh, what kind of savings, you know, are you likely to realize in terms of these, this new um, method of service delivery? Thank you. So to respond to that, I think we need to look at uh, the full spectrum of, of, of this uh, delivery issue. So for us, it started off by what is currently the cost of delivering blood to rural areas? and then understanding what are some of the wastages that happen along the way. Um, it took us three hours to deliver blood on average uh, from uh, one location to another. And so looking at that and understanding how many lives are lost within those three hours when you cannot get blood on time to those places or even when you have some of the uh, you know, blood products that get there and they're not in, you know, in a good condition. And so looking at that, then we started to think, if we use drones, how much are we serving? So from three hours, we were, we were looking at, we, were now, we are now able to deliver blood products within um, a range of between 13 to 26 minutes, depending on how far, how far the, the health centers are. So that was one aspect. And then we were able to drop uh, blood wasted because even if you travel three hours with vehicles or motorcycles to deliver the blood, then you had to deliver large quantities that could sustain the healthcare center for a while before you have to make another trip to bring more uh, blood products. 
And so what that meant was that in, in the process of storing for a certain, you know, a few days when you don't know if you're actually going to need it, some of that blood, you know, goes to waste. And so that reduced significantly from, you know, about 30% to 0.3% and actually zero for the, for the health centers that were served immediately. And so looking at all those savings, then they made a good justification for how much it would just cost to transport blood using a drone versus a motorcycle or a vehicle. So you look at the other savings that you're going to make and how they compensate for just looking at simply what's the cost of using a car to transport three hours versus a drone to transport in 13 minutes. And so really looking at that full spectrum of savings and wastage was able to compensate for, because using drones was slightly more expensive than, than using a car, but then the savings on blood wastage and, and the amount of time it takes you to get it there uh, compensated for that. Thank you. Any, um, any further questions? I think we'll close there. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.